Now why you here? Don't get scared. Hello and welcome back to a brand new Flick Pick live show. This is it, Don't Get Scared. And with all that said, let's just talk about some movies. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Thanks for joining me, where you guys get to look at my atrocious face for the next 90 minutes as I just blabber about cinema and other random shit in life. But either way, thanks for coming back. Uh, the White Skull says, hi, John. Well... Hi, White Skull. How are you doing today? <laughs> uh, whoa, I caught it at the start. Yes, you did. This is a very impromptu live show. I had no intention of doing this probably nine minutes ago. And then I realized once I had two minutes left on the countdown, once I started, I did not turn on any lights in the room. I had to pee. I had to grab something to drink. So for the last 90 seconds, I was running around my house doing cartwheels and backflips trying to get this ready for you. But nevertheless, we did make it. The lights are on and you can see, well, some dude sitting in his underwear alone in his office. But I have my movies behind me to keep me company and to make me feel better about who I am and what I'm doing in life. Uh, Bathcoat says, John, what do you think about the Stuckman controversy? If you're talking about the controversy of making a video with the thumbnail of Madame Webb on it, and then you don't really review the movie or talk about the movie, but then you kind of complain about the state of criticism towards movies and bad movies overall, but you don't give any real criticisms towards the movie that you're talking about, I, I just... I didn't understand the point of it. Um, but if, if that's a controversy you're talking about, isn't that funny? That's controversy nowadays on the internet. Some guy made a video uh, that relates to movies and I don't know. I don't care to be, to be honest. I just genuinely don't care. Um, he's listen, the guy wants to be a director in Hollywood. He's not going to step on someone else's shoes and shit on a movie He's going to talk about movies that he likes, and that that is it. So, I mean, if you know what you're getting when you click on the video, then I, I don't know how you could be shocked or surprised by the end of it when you didn't hear a criticism about the film. Um, and I don't know if he calls himself a film critic anymore. I, I think he'd rather call himself a director. And I think in Hollywood, it's, it's very hard to be a, a film critic and also get gigs. The egos are just too big. You can't put them all in one place. So I think he's leaning towards the route of wanting to be a film director, but his outlet and his escape method is still YouTube. It pays the bills, but if he can make it in Hollywood, then I think that's where he would prefer to be. And it makes sense. I get it. You know, I always wanted to be a uh, an astronaut, and then I realized I wasn't very good at it because I have a fear of heights. Then I wanted to be a mathematician and the furthest I got in math in high school was pre-algebra two. And I copied off a 14 year old kid in front of me. And then I wanted to be a singer and a dancer, but I'm slightly tone deaf. So what did I do? Well, I took my passion of films. I turned on a camera and I gave myself to the internet. I know that sounds dark and morbid, but it's the truth. And that's why we're here right now. John's gay. I am not, but I assure you if I were, life would be so much easier. And if I was, I'm telling you right now, I would probably have more subscribers than I do. Anyway, Jason Dolan says, John, would you like to direct Madame Web 2? Oh boy, would I? Yeah, I did see. Okay, so hear me out for a second and we'll get into the uh, the super chat questions momentarily. But I did see Madame Web. I put out a tweet stating that I did not want to see it, that I tried to force myself to, and I simply could not do it. But then Sunday came along, and me and uh, the lady friend were very bored, and we wanted something to do. And I thought, you know what? Let me see this piece of shit. That way I can talk about it. And hey, maybe it'll surprise me. Maybe it's not as bad as I assume it's going to be by the trailer I watched. And it's exactly what I thought it would be. It's a, a tone-deaf, directionless movie that just almost tries to make you hate it in the last seven minutes of the film. And as far as an origin story goes, I would say this is one of the most boring origin stories ever told. 
And going into it, I at least had the assumption, and if you liked the movie, we'll get to that in just one second. I'm not hating on the movie, okay? Um, yes, I am. That's a lie. I am going to hate on it, but just give me a second to get there, all right? I, I at least assumed going into the film that we would have some corny bullshit happening. We'd have ladies swinging by wearing spider woman suits in the streets of New York city. And I was like, okay, you know what? That could be fun to watch for a little bit, right? It's a rainy cold day. Let me just eat some Swedish fish and watch spider ladies fly around the city. But you don't even really get that. You get that in the sense of like a 13 second flash forward uh, dream sequence of sorts, but you don't really get it. You just get Dakota Johnson being an EMT and then kidnapping three teenage girls who all look like they're 28 years old for two hours. And it also contains what I would say, and I'm not just saying this to, to crap on the movie. I'm really not. I will. I'll, let me say this about Madame Webb. This is better than Loki. There you go. I think the thing that I got most wrong going into this, I thought it would be worse than I'm not sorry. Not Loki, not Loki, Morbius. Let me punish myself for misspeaking there. I assume this would be worse than Morbius. It's not. I actually thought this had a little bit of self-aware humor at times, but then it felt like it lost it. It was almost like Dakota Johnson knew she was in a really bad movie. So she was playing the part like she's in an SNL skit about comic book movies, but she just, she's giving it that same demeanor and tone that you would give it in a comedy sketch. But that was her character. Just very awkward. <laughs> and and it worked sometimes, but other times I couldn't believe that was the direction someone told her to, like, the director said, just make this really awkward and almost make it unintentionally funny. Go. And I feel like that was the direction for every scene that she was receiving. But let me go back to my, my point I was trying to make. Yes, I will get to the questions. I promise you in just one second. I need a rant. I need to talk. That's why I turned on this camera today. The villain in this film, I couldn't believe, was in a, a film that costs hundreds of millions of dollars or 50 or 80 million dollars. It costs tens of millions of dollars. The dude that they cast in this film, and if he and if he's a good actor and he starred in something else that you think is a, is a, a well-rounded performance, please let me know. Uh, but for now, just let me be ignorant and speak upon this. Uh, I think he was the worst actor like ever put into a comic book film, it almost felt like there would be more charisma and better line delivery. Had they cast Tommy Wiseau to be the villain in Madame Webb. Oh, what a funny story. Madame Webb. Where are the three little girls at? <laughs> do you know girls like to swing like boys do? Um, that would have been better line delivery and a better, better scene with better dialogue. But there's a sequence in here. And by the way, the guy that they got cast, I, is he from South America or something? Did they dub every single line that he gave in this film? It felt so dubbed, but by a bad voice actor. For example, there's a scene where the guy just looks at computer screens in his apartment half the film, talking to some hacker chick who don't even know who she is or how she came to be. But she's hacking into computers watching CIA networks on 14 screens in front of her in his studio apartment in Manhattan City. And apparently he's some billionaire. But anyway, <laughs> there's a sequence where he's just looking out over a rooftop, hoping to somehow track down these three girls. And, and his line delivery was, why don't you learn to use the computer equipment I got you better? And then the scene just cuts. Like he says that to his hacker chair. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, there was a rumor going around that this was actually, this screenplay was written by AI. And I could see that being the case. And you know what? You can almost get away with writing a screenplay with AI. If you went back in and tweaked it just a little bit, like, you know, worked on some of the dialogue and maybe just change this and flip this around. Maybe it could work. But no, 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 no. They just typed this shit in the chat GPT. They said, give me a mediocre Madame Web movie. Go. And that's what we got. So those are my thoughts on the film. I thought it was an atrocity against cinema. 
And maybe I'm not telling you anything you haven't heard already, but I just, I'm stating my opinion and this is how I truly feel. I was hoping it would be just mildly entertaining. I was hoping for something better than Electra, maybe slightly better than Catwoman. And at least give me Sydney Sweeney swinging around on a web in New York City. And it just, it did none of that. I don't know what this movie was. I don't know why it was made. I Maybe to keep the IP, legally speaking, they had to make a Madame Web movie before 2025 to retain the rights to the the, the character. I don't know. Um, but it was really just unfortunate. And it really let me down. Not only because the movie was bad, but it, we're just in such a dour state of cinema right now. Are we not? I know you guys say I, I'm always mad and I hate movies, but... The only big movie we have right now to leave our house and go see at the theater is Madame fucking Webb. And that is not even an excuse for a film. So those are my thoughts. Let's just dive into the good stuff. Did you guys like Madame Webb? Uh, John, Sony, I think, is not a good movie studio. Sony can be a great movie studio, just not when it comes to comic book movies these days. Sony needs to let go of the superhero genre. You know, I agree. I don't know why they keep hiring these writers that feel like they should write screenplays for Twilight fan fiction. And that's sort of what Madame Webb felt like ever so slightly. It just felt like some kind of weird form of fan fiction, but written by someone who's never read a comic book (laughs) or seen a good movie. Uh, don't kill the buzz, John. That's what Stuckman videos are for. Oh, God. And click right here if you want to get Stuckmanized. All right. Thank God Dune 2 is right around the corner. Hey, I'm I'm ready for a, a epic sci-fi film made by talented people. I, I can't wait. Give it to me now. All right. Let's dive into some of these uh, juicy questions over here. I got a clue who says, Watched Society of the Snow after the last live stream. Great recommendation. Looking to see if I could get another, perhaps a horror movie recommendation. I'm trying to think of a great horror film I've seen recently that's new. And I'm there might be something deep down in the reservoir, the void of my brain. But I, I can't come up with one. Um, I would say, you know, one I would recommend that I waited a long time to see, and maybe you haven't, but I'm sure you have. It Follows, I quite enjoyed. I thought that was a great horror film. If, if you want to check out something a little bit more subdued and subtle, which kind of that's what tickles my fancy nowadays. Did, okay, let's go to the next question. All right, the next one comes from... Andrew Gordon, who says nothing, and Andrew Gordon an- another time with a with a super chat said nothing, but thank you, Andrew Gordon. Uh, Rex says, what are your favorite films set in New York City? Well, I would say, uh, ex- uh, let's get the obvious ones out of the way, okay, shall we? Escape from New York, uh, I think is phenomenal. Thought you'd be a lot bigger. Snake Plissken. Remember when they talked about a remake of that for like 15 years starring Gerard Butler? The Duke of New York! Uh, I love Escape from New York. I love the tone, the vibe, the synth sounds. I feel like if you were going to remake it nowadays, if you got a really talented director and had like a film noir vibe with it, that that could be an okay remake. There, I said it. I would like to see a remake of, of Escape from New York, but only if it's done with, with a good director, good actor. Think of something in along, I mean, maybe this is a bad example. Maybe this isn't even a good one at all. I was thinking, think of Drive with Ryan Gosling meets Escape from New York. Either the best idea ever or maybe the worst. I don't know. A little too artsy? Okay, all right. Okay, fuck it. Let's have uh, James Cameron direct it. Let's go to the next question here. If I can find it. Okay, here it goes. Oh, by the way, I did not technically answer all of your question. You said favorite films based in New York City. Well, there's Sex in the City. Um, there's Wolf of Wall Street. There's Godzilla, 1998. I mean, the list just keeps going for great movies set in New York City. It feels like 90% of movies are set in New York City or Los Angeles, are they not? 
I would say, you know what? If I had to go to one film that really utilizes New York City and the, and the kind of the the dirty, grungy areas that you don't always see with the skylines of Manhattan, I would say The Warriors is a great film set in New York City, Coney Island, you know? I, I'd say that's one of my favorites. But then you have American Psycho, which was technically filmed in Vancouver or Toronto, and very few of the scenes were actually filmed in New York, but either way, it's set in New York City, right? That's what counts. My favorite movie that takes place in New York City is Sleepless in Seattle. Let's go to the next question. And it is Smell... Oh, did we answer? Okay, Smell Mundo, who says, John, my dear lad, I've noticed you have commented a few times on my buddy Jorel Alexandra's YouTube channel. He talks movies too. Could you read this in a menacing voice? I've, what the fuck are you going to make me say? I've heard what you've said about me, jor I'm coming for you. Love you, bud. I, I was going to try to do a Morgan Freeman voice, but I just, it's getting too late and the, the medication has kicked in. I'm getting a little, little loopy. Uh, DJ Run says, can you do a Morgan? Oh gosh, speak of the devil. Can you do a Morgan Freeman impression of the best man speech at your wedding? Now, now, here, listen, Sonny Jim. You're going to marry this broad, and you're going to like it. She's like a rusty spoon. She gets better with age. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Carter Lovejoy says, Thoughts on Sony taking over all of Disney's physical media production? This comes after the news of the closure of the Disney Movie Club. Um, I, well, I tell you this. I'm a grown ass man. I ain't going to cry over the Disney movie club on camera. I do that late at night. No, I, I will tell you a story about the Disney movie club in just five seconds. But first, I think it's a good thing if Disney's not into handling their physical media or if they're just giving, giving it to someone else to make a cut and they don't have to really do any of the effort. But hey, at least maybe, um, is it Sony taking over? Okay, maybe Sony will do more with their physical releases or maybe push to have more physical releases of things. Hey, as long as they're still making it, there's still a little bit of hope, right? But then again, what's the last Disney property in the last 10 years that you'd actually want to buy a physical copy of besides the Marvel movies, right? Uh, the next one comes from Greg Sheen, who says, Hey, Johnny boy. When are you getting a letterbox? Probably never, man. If I ever really have the urge to share thoughts on a movie, I'd probably just make a uh, uh, YouTube short or TikTok or whatever the kids do nowadays. I'd probably just record my thoughts there and crap them out into the world. Um, yeah, I'm just not into like typing up reviews or going through and clicking every rating I like for a movie. I'm, I'm just, I don't mind looking through them. I just... Not into doing it. It sounds really overwhelming at this point to play catch up on such a thing. Like I would just have to sit there for 27 years. Just, okay, this movie gets three stars. This movie gets a star. This movie, like, how could I ever do that? I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel like there's enough time to do this right now. But that's why I'm here. Because this gets, you know what this does for me? It's, pro it's probably the same thing Letterbox does for you. You just you release that passion for sharing your thoughts on movies, right? You have a, a dialogue about them. Well, that's what this shit is. This is my letter boxed. Welcome. Okay, the next one comes from... Uh, I'm sorry. I, I think I'm dyslexic tonight. Okay, here we go. Smell Mundo back again. <laughs> Johnny, my lad, I've been thinking a lot about the story you told when you and Jeremy Johns went suit shopping. Could you tell us exactly how that went down again? It's great to have you back, buddy. We missed you. Well, thank you for that, Smell Mundo. Um, this was 2012. Uh, we went to Los Angeles to do a cameo in the You Reviewers that the Schmoes used to host back in the day. And it was uh, Jeremy Johns, it was me, it was Stuckman, uh, it was the Schmoes know, uh, Mark Ellis, and um, 
Christian Harloff, and uh, we just got together in this studio and shot some segments for the the You Reviewers thing while I was there. But we were walking down uh, some street in Los Angeles, and Jeremy Johns is really into suits, and he saw a men's warehouse, and he's like, hey, let's go in there and look at the suits. And I couldn't think of anything worse to do, but nevertheless, we all went in, and he looked at a couple uh, silk vests, I don't think any of them were magenta enough for his taste. And then uh, we left. And that's the story of going suit shopping with Jeremy Johns. The next one comes from Rex, who says, what are your favorite video game movies? Well, besides Mortal Kombat 1995, is there really another good video game movie? Let's talk about video game movies just for one second. And if you guys are in the normal chat, I want you guys to type in your favorite video game movie. And if you can quickly condense it, tell me your reason why. Just give me one. Just one reason why. Okay, maybe two. All right, we got one in here from Eric Carter who says, Hey, John, just curious, what software are you using to do your live streams? I use Streamlabs. Uh, that's what I use. And I have everything going through there. I have a 4K uh, HDMI cable that's connected to my Sony cam uh, that feeds into my computer. And then I run it all through OSB, or, or I'm sorry, Streamlabs, which is free. It works. It does its job. Uh, a lot of the graphics I have on here I, I made in Photoshop, then I just put them into the software. But it, it works. Uh, so that's what I'm using. And don't ask me any questions on how to use it. I don't even, I barely know how to use this shit. I'll just be honest with you. If something went wrong, I would probably just shut my computer off and go to bed. It took me about three years to even get to this point. Uh, Carter Lovejoy says, oh, sorry. Okay. Next question. Oh, let me read some of these video game questions. Come on. I thought you guys are better than this. Chime in the chat right now. Let me know your favorite fucking video game movie. I'm not asking anymore. I need you to tell me. I demand it. Give it to me. Come on. Come on. Give it to me. Um, <laughs> Borderlands, the movie trailer drops tomorrow. That could be cool. I always thought Borderlands could make a pretty, go pretty good uh, post-apocalyptic Mad Max-like movie. That could be pretty awesome. Street, Street Fighter 1994, watch it when you're drunk. Yeah, you know what's funny? I saw that in the theater when I was a kid back in 1994, and I remember that experience almost vividly. I was a huge fan of the Street Fighter games. I always played the arcade machines. And when I saw that film and what they did with Blanca, and I liked Jean-Claude Van Damme as a kid, but even as a kid, I thought, why the fuck did they cast John Claw Van Damme for this role? I mean, he kind of looks the part, but I just, I don't know. The The French accent really was unbecoming, wasn't it? Gran Turismo was fun. I, I thought it was okay. I thought if that was made like 15 years ago, that would have been like, oh, that was a okay video game movie. But at this point, it just, and I get why they had to do it. It just, the story of it was, I know it was based on a true story, but it was just so funny cliched uh, i i remember um oh god uh hopper's name what's the actor anyway hellboy not ron perlman hellboy he, he just he, all he did was give motivational speeches every seven minutes in that film hey kid you gotta dust yourself self off and get up behind the wheel and not be afraid to take chances that's what i did you know, it's just it's such a cliche, but it was well. I think the production value was pretty good. Uh, Tetris, yeah, I, Tetris is pretty good. David Harbour, yes, that, sorry. Last of Us, the series, not bad, not bad. Uh, the Mario movie, I was not a fan of the new Mario movie. I think if you're a kid and you liked it, that's great, but I just wanted something a little different than that. Like, I get that it paid a little bit of tribute to the lore of Mario, but I, I just wanted something that wasn't. And I, I know it sounds so weird to say this about a Mario movie, but it was just a little too childish. <laughs> you know, it just, it just, I wanted something a little more like a little more humor, such as like at least Shrek, 
You know how Shrek rides that line with some adult innuendos every once in a while? I was, you know, maybe, maybe he can't do that anymore. All right, the next one comes from Chris Shillman, who says nothing. All right. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole Stuckman situation, um, I, I'm seeing more comments about it. He he only reviews movies he likes. So, so you, I don't know. I mean, I guess the, the one thing you can take from it was he said, don't criticize art because people will get offended or something. I don't know. Um, I just think when it comes to subjective things that are publicly made by a corporation, which are technically products, you're allowed to criticize that and call it out and say it's bad. And I, I think to deny that right is to deny being what makes it, I don't know, a human human. <laughs> I, I was looking for the Jeff Goldblum quote in Jurassic Park there. I think it's rape of the natural world is what I'm saying to all of you. Now, if you see these water drops in your hand, ah, 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 you see that? Ah. <laughs> so much controversy here. The, the con It's so crazy that this is controversy. Like, I, it, it baffles me. I guess I just knew this already. I don't. Uh... But chime in. Let's hear your thoughts. Let's get dark and gritty. The next one comes from DJ Run, who says, can you do a Morgan Freeman impression of where? Why is the chat so screwed up? Remember, how I told you I know how to use OBS. Well, I blatantly lied to all of you. Where are the questions here? Okay. Claudia Rogujan says, Chris Stuckman's, I'm sorry, comments on Chris, Jesus, I'm reading this so dyslexic-like. Comments on Chris's Madame Web video are hilarious. Yeah, I, I scrolled through a couple of them. Um, <laughs> hey, I don't know. Good thing BetterHelp was the sponsor in the video. I, I don't know. Uh... Have I seen what damn web? Yes, I have. I talked about it in the beginning of the, the live stream for like seven minutes. If you want to scroll back and check that out. I loved it. I just spoilers. I loved the movie. Uh, Dodgson says, Hey John, love your videos. Which movie are you most anticipating for me? It's Sasquatch sunset. Have you watched the trailer? Sasquatch? I maybe I have. That's not ringing a bell off the top of my head. I'm sorry. That sounds familiar. What What is the movie where it's like they have, we're having a civil war in America. It's an A24 film. It comes out April like 6th or something. That kind of looked intriguing to me. I didn't know anything about that until recently. Um, there's a couple movies coming out this summer that I cannot pinpoint right now. It, it's a bad moment right now for me to remember things. I'm looking forward to Furiosa. I would say that's the next big movie I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Dune. I'm hoping I'm hoping it's what I want in in cinema. Um, there's a couple little hidden gems though coming out this year. I feel like a few of them come out later in the summer. It's kind of a weird year for movies. There's not there's no huge big blockbusters to cling on to, and everything else coming out, it's not really an IP. So I'm not. I don't really know what's on the horizon right now. I haven't really been looking at upcoming films. I think is the Batman overrated? No, I, I think it depends how you look at it. I don't think it's overrated. No. <laughs> All right. Um, the next one. Oh, Deadpool and Wolverine. It looks fine. It looks like a, a decent comic book movie. I would say that's, that's kind of like the biggest comic book movie coming out all year. Isn't that kind of odd? But give it 2025. Uh, Carter Lovejoy says, thoughts on... S we answered this already. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the questions here at one point, at some point in this live show. Rex says, do you collect 
anything else other than movies. Just bodies under my my floor space. Um, no, you, no, not really. I don't really collect. You know what I collect most of lately? It's kind of weird. I know. I'm definitely hitting a midlife crisis soon. I have been buying a lot of tools, like power tools, but just little odd and end tools that I might only use once in my lifetime or occasionally. But I've been buying a lot of tools, so I have this entire wall in my garage. That's an exaggeration, but a section of a wall in, in my garage. And I have all my tools on it, but they're perfectly organized and balanced just right, as all things should be in life. Um yeah, just a lot of good composition going on with my tools, all, all I'm saying. But I like having all of them. They comfort me because you never know when you're going to get in the mood for a bike ride on a nice February day and want to inflate your tire. And I literally just did that three hours ago. So I collect tools. <laughs> uh, John McLaylin says, John, my girlfriend and I are about to have our five-year anniversary next month. Could you give us a shout out? Well, happy five years, Jack and his lady friend. And here's the five more. Great, beautiful, not miserable, glorious years. So thank you, Jack. Uh, Jace Holloway says, hey, John. Was watching classic 90s wrestling with friends last night, and I thought of a memory I have of you going on a about the Hell in a Cell match between Undertaker and Mankind on a stream years ago. You mean King of the Ring 1998? Oh, I vividly remember that day. It was a beautiful day, and I'll tell you why. If you don't watch wrestling, that's fine. I get it. But I do. Now, hear me out. Just watch King of the Ring 1998, Mankind versus The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match. It's the most brutal shit you'll ever see between two human beings... In a spectacle, theatrical battle. It's, it's, it's glorious and it will never be duplicated or replicated. Um, and, and I'll tell you this. This is why I like it so much. I had not ever really been into wrestling until on Monday Night Raw, I clicked on the channel. I saw replay clips from the night before at the pay-per-view where they had the King of the Ring match. And then I was instantly glued. A dude flies off a 16-foot cage through a table, dislocates his shoulder, knocks his tooth through his nose, has a concussion, and finishes a 15-minute match that concludes with him being chokeslammed and tombstone pile-drived on fucking thumbtacks. Did you hear what I just said? So anyway, I hope that was fulfilling. Uh, Rex says, do you collect any... Th oh, I already answered that. Jack, did I answer... Okay. Clearly, I'm having an aneurysm tonight, and I am so sorry you had to witness this. But the next question is, Movies for Life, who says, I recently binged Invincible on Amazon. I highly recommend it. Some of the most gripping and intense superhero content on TV since Netflix is Daredevil. Invincible. Yes, I've heard that was good. I never got around to watching it. I did... Get uh, through uh, five episodes or three episodes of the newest season of The Boys. Oh, real quick. I did remember a new movie that I recently watched. Not only did I watch it, we paid $20 on VOD to watch this, this piece of junk. And it was called Miller's Girl. Now, the premise is a little bit creepy, but it stars Jenna Ortega. And I thought she was great in the film, though she always kind of plays... She's way too smart for her age. She's a little bit kooky and gothic, but still like pretty. She always plays the same typecasting. It feels, you know, she's basically just Wednesday Adams at a different level in every movie. But with all that said, Miller's girl, that did not feel like a real movie. It felt like a weird dream sequence from a 16 year old girl writing in her diary. And it felt incomplete at best. Have you guys seen Miller's Girl? I do not recommend it. And uh, it was just really boring. Uh, Katami Cross says, Hey, John, any tips on how to get a girlfriend? Yeah, man. Stop watching this shit and get out of the house now. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, the next one comes from... <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, James Dosher says, Thoughts on Marlon Brando as an actor? Uh, hey, Stella! I, I thought young Marlon Brando was great. I think even older Marlon Brando, even though he got super kooky in his old age and started doing some really weird shit, I mean, lots of drugs along the way, but around the Godfather air, he kind of peaked, in my opinion, and it felt like the majority of everything he ever did after that, he just did not give a shit. So, I mean, he's such a method actor um, that some of the stories you read about him on set during films, like showing up, not reading, reading the script or just changing everything because he just got so weird and bizarre in his old age. But I, young Marlon Brando was great. I mean, I, I think Tom Hardy is sort of like a reincarnation of Marlon Brando in many, many ways. He kind of looks like him, especially when he was younger. Um and just kind of has the same acting style. I almost feel like he kind of copy and pasted a little bit of Brando's style, in my opinion. All right, the next one comes from... John, what is the most boringest film you've ever saw? Whew. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I know I have a great answer. If you could leave me alone for like 20 minutes to come up with it. I, I'm, I'm hard pressed to pick the most boring film I've ever seen. I mean, I, I'll just pick a recent movie and I'll, I'll even pick a movie that I thought would be good. I was anticipating the film, but I couldn't believe that they would make the subject matter as boring as they did. And that would be Napoleon. If I was going to pick a movie of the last like year or so. You have this epic character, this really fascinating story. You could just show battle sequences for half the film and I would be sold as long as it's historical, historically accurate. But they just took the wrong direction with that movie. Uh, so, yeah, I would say that was one of the most boring, tedious experiences I've had for a film I actually wanted to see. Now, if I wanted to say like comic book wise, I would say like the Marvels was just kind of boring to me. Someone said Blair Witch 1999. I was never a big Blair Witch 1999 fan. I'm sorry. I, I just, I didn't get it. And I get, I get why it was, it had this shock value. It felt like a found footage film. But for me, even in the nineties as a kid, I wanted a little more production quality. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to watch this death tape. These children recorded. I want to see Nightmare on Elm Street with better hair lighting. I am reading the normal chat, and some of these comments are always great and glorious. Some of them are a little bit mean. Some of them are mean, so I won't read the mean ones. Okay. Uh, the next one comes from the 50% Doctor Who podcast who says, John, what specs do you use to stream? Looks great. Holy shit, man. I cannot answer all of that right now. Not because it's top secret. Just because I simply do not know anymore. I clicked through all the settings on here. Basically what I would recommend. I just click a tutorial video. But I have a 4K camera that's actually streaming at 1080p. And I use a 4K cam link. I plug that into the computer. And then in Streamlabs, I just go to the settings and make sure all the bit rate's good. And I have... I have a lot of lighting in this video. I dialed in the camera settings just right. But the lighting is better than you probably think it is. There's many of light sources shooting down at me right now. <laughs> Could I have said that in a weirder fucking way? Probably not. But I do have a lot of light surrounding me. And in the background. It's all about the ambiance, you know? All right. The next one comes from Claudia Rogerjohn, who says, King of New York is pretty great. Yeah, King, I've seen that once. I did enjoy it. Christopher Walken. You know, the next question is from your mother. John, why are your eyes so azul? It's glorious. I don't know if that was the best Christopher Walken impression I've ever accidentally done. Or possibly the worst. 
Or maybe I just now had an aneurysm. Let's go to the next question. Oh, that took a lot out of me. Sick Puppy 208 says, Hey, John, have you ever watched the 1998 film A Simple Plan with Bill Paxton? If so, thoughts? I have seen A Simple Plan, and I love films like A Simple Plan. And Fargo sort of has the same tone. And also, Fargo the series has Billy Bob Thornton as well. Anyway, A Simple Plan is sort of a... Someone who commits a crime and just everything keeps getting worse and worse. And no matter what they do, they simply make the wrong decision every step along the way. And I love films like that. Um, uh, yeah, so A Simple Plan is great. It, it had Bill Paxton, right? And by the way, I know a lot of you guys over the years had said, John, why don't you start watching Fargo the series? And guess what? I'm happy to announce I have started watching it. I think I'm on episode three. I like it. I like it. Um, but it's definitely one of those shows I'll watch when I don't know what else to watch and I want to eat some food. KVTV says, has he talked about Chris Duckman's Madame Webb scandal yet? I Yeah, I, I touched on it. I think it's crazy. I mean, listen, I'll just be more blunt so we can stop repeating it. I, Stuckman announced years ago that he was not going to critique films. And the reason being is he wants to make it into the film industry. I get it. So he's just simply talking about things he likes. Uh, and if you don't see a video of a bad movie on his channel, well, it probably means he didn't like it. Uh, but with his newest video with Madame Webb, I get where he was coming from to a certain degree. But at the same time, I would never say that. <laughs> like, like, I would think to myself, don't say this if you have an audience of passionate movie lovers that you want to stick around and believe in your criticisms and, and think that you're offering a personable, honest approach to a film. And when you lose that credibility, A, you've sold your soul to the devil, Hollywood, talking to you or you've lost your path or maybe he just said it the wrong way or maybe some people are overreacting or maybe just maybe I don't find it real controversy I I just I feel like if you watched his channel you kind of knew the direction he was leaning and that felt like the path and he just Said his thoughts without actually saying anything about a movie that it was he was talking about. <laughs> okay. But I won't lie to you guys. I'll be honest. Forever and ever. By the way, did I mention this video is brought to you by Sprite Zero? It's really good. <laughs> but it really is. See, that's the truth. I can't even lie to you. Okay. I mean, listen, I don't really talk to Stuckman that much anymore, guys. And and it's just, there's a, a different mentality that's formed. And now you get to see it. All right. Let's go to the next question. It's just a movie, though. It's Madame Web. I think it's, it's a shitty comic book movie, right? So... I don't know if this was the best one to make that video for. Maybe it was. It, unintentionally, it, it kind of is funny. I don't know. Man, I'm, I'm, I am reading your comments. All right. Let's get back to the good stuff over here. <laughs> but gossip is fun, isn't it? Hey, uh, Jason says 25 minutes ago because John can't hurry up and read the fucking questions quicker and he's rambling on about controversy says, hey, John, what the fuck say? I don't know. I don't know. What did the fox say? What is that? That's from something, right? John or uh, knock knock. Who's there? 
It's the police, ma'am. Your, your son's been killed in a drunk driving accident. <laughs> now that's a knock-knock joke. Night King 01 says, John, I wonder, do you have the same feeling that I'm having that actors today don't feel the same as actors even 20 years ago? And they aren't cast right. And look at media like Sopranos, perfectly cast, no big names. It's so refreshing and they feel so real. They do indeed. You know, casting nowadays, for me, for the most part, and not always, sometimes you get a great casting choice. And for me, a, a perfect casting choice is when you see a performance and you think to yourself, who else could play this role? And when the answer is no one, you know it's right. But now it feels like Hollywood, they sort of have five different looks that they cast in Hollywood. And they all share the same personality as well. It's like you have bland guy number two, bland guy number one. And that's sort of, that's that's the char characteristic traits for most movies nowadays. Like, for example, I'll, I'll give you one here. Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you the best example I can give you at uh, 9.47 on a work night. Take Jurassic Park. Think about the charisma in that film. Think about every actor just bringing something weird and different and kooky and, and original to these roles that maybe otherwise written on the pages of a script would be a little flat. But they make it work. Look what Jeff Goldblum did with Ian Malcolm. No one else could have done that. Maybe Nicolas Cage, but I'm just saying. But then you take something like Jurassic World and you think about all of the characters in that film. Can you describe their characters? I can't. What, what? How do you describe Owen? Guy good at everything, brave, generic good guy. And then you describe Claire. They just, they fall flat, right? And I think that's, I don't know if that's casting or maybe that's just bad screenplays. But I would like to think charismatic actors could elevate those roles. Just, just slightly. I'm just, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting on some kind of weird tangent. I digress. Let's get back to the question. <sighs> okay. Jason says, the world is ending and there's nowhere to run or hide. Where do you go and what is the last thing you do? Well, that depends how long I have. The truth be told, I have great survival instincts. I unfortunately can just not allow myself to die. I know that sounds weird. It sounds crazy, but I would probably find a way to get some to some kind of underground bunker because I at least have to have a chance at survival. I would just never do what they did in Deep Impact and walk to the shorefront and hug my father until a two-mile tall tsunami swiped us off the planet. I'd probably go a little bit further inland just to try. Uh, so if I know I'm going to die, I guess all you can do is take drugs, hug your loved ones, and make some corny jokes until the asteroid hits and uh, disintegrates everyone instantaneously. And Earth doesn't populate again for billions of years, but it's, it starts a better beginning, a new beginning. <laughs> and now I will give you my Thanos rant. Did I say Jurassic World twice? I've met Jurassic Park the first time around. I'm sorry. Listen, guys, I'm not reading off of a teleprompter right now. I'm just a dude wearing underwear talking to the internet, okay? I know that's not even new these days, but here I am. <laughs> okay, the next one comes from What Drugs? Just Sprite Zero Sugar, man. Uh, Jace Holloway says, and by the way, thanks to all 291 of you watching tonight. Thank you for joining me. Feel free to chime in, share your thoughts on movies, life, or what have you. You know what I would like real quick before we continue on with these great glorious questions. And we still have lots of questions to go. I'm 27 minutes behind. I'll start reading them quicker, but if you guys want to chime in with where you're watching right now, please do. I'm not talking about the state or the city, just the location. Where are you right now? Don't share your address. I don't want that. Just tell me what you're doing and where you are. Are you on a laptop? Are you taking a crap with your iPhone? Where, where are you? What are you doing? 
Okay, share your thoughts. All right, the next one comes from Jace Holloway, who says, John was watching classic 90s wrestling with my friend last night, and I thought of a memory I have of you going on... I read this already. I'm sorry, guys. The chat is repeating itself. Big Tony Rocket says, John, thoughts on Take Shelter? I don't... With Is that with Michael Shannon? A- am I remembering that right? I don't think I saw it. I heard it was good. Uh, Lauren Middleton says, are you excited about the new Grand Theft Auto game? Slightly. I have not played a Grand Theft Auto game in probably 15 years. I do want, I do like watching clips every once in a while. And uh, I am excited that it's going to be so huge and massive that maybe just maybe I'll get into it just to cruise the streets. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm vaguely excited about it. But really, when it comes to games, the only thing I play nowadays is Rocket League obsessively. I like to get, you know what it is for me? When it comes to video games, I like something I can pick up, play for 15, 20, 30 minutes, just relax for a few, and then get up and go. I don't want something that's going to take up years of my life. That's where I'm at with games. Uh, Joseph Knowles says, can you do a haka face and scream? Ah, sorry. Do you want me to cut my chest and get on a log? Uh, Jason says, John, you're my best friend in a past life, and I miss you dearly. But will, but you will never, never believe me. What should I do? Oh, okay. We were friends in a past life? I'm sorry. This is uh, This is too much right now, man. Well, I would just embrace the thought one day when we're dead and rotting in our sarcophagus. Sarcophagus? We'll just say caskets at this point. Sarcophagus. Is that the word I'm looking for? Anyway, we'll be together eventually. I don't know. What do you want from me right now, man? One day, brother, we will do scissor kicks together in the gates of Valhalla. Uh, the next one comes from Teacher Dan, who says, John, your hair reminds me of Tom Hardy today, and that's a compliment. Stoked about Dune 2. Well, thank you for that, sir. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Uh, thank you for that. Dune 2, I'm looking forward to. I can't wait to watch it. I, it's just been a while since I've been to the theater and saw something that was competently and and well-made with a master craftsman that's perfecting his artist, artistry. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, and honestly, to be honest with you, I didn't love, uh, the first Dune and, um, but I'm looking forward to it. Nevertheless. (laughs) Uh, the next one comes from the movie Raider says, John, have you seen the set pictures from the upcoming Michael Jackson biopic that have leaked? Are you excited for this film? I kind of am slightly. And I don't know if it's because I think it's going to be a really good movie and really tell the story about a really interesting guy named Michael Jackson because his life story was made to be a biopic from his childhood through the 80s, through the 90s, to the 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 kookiness that his life took on. I mean, the guy was f- really fascinating and weird. And I would love a great, well done, masterfully directed biopic about Michael Jackson. But, 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 I don't know. That set photo looked a little odd to me. I am curious to see the film, but I really feel like it's going to be along the same tone of something like a, a Bohemian Rhapsody. I think they'll touch on a lot of things. And kind of glamorize a lot of it while still sort of being a cheerleader for him. And that's fine. But I feel like it won't get into the nitty gritty that I really want it to. Uh, But then again, you know, maybe it'll be great. I just feel like since his family gave it the blessing, I, I just feel like there's some subject matters that they might skim over slightly. Okay, the next one comes from (laughs) 
Someone's trying to ask me a question in the normal chat, but then every time I find your question, you're just saying, I'll keep trying to ask. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Jason says, oh, I already answered this one. Joseph Knoll says, can you do, I already answered, come on, OBS, help me out here. Here we go. This is finally a new question. DJ Run says, hey, John, speaking of wrestling, what are your thoughts on Vince McMahon's accusations? That's some crazy shit. But once again, does it shock you? Does it surprise you whatsoever? He was having grown men kiss his ass in 1998 on national television, and it was a joke. What do you think a guy like that does behind closed doors? I'm not, I, it's, it's not even slightly shocking to me whatsoever. I just thought that was just assumed knowledge. I want to flick into your biopic. I, I think it'd be surprising to you if it was, if you got the real life, true story, it might be vaguely interesting or it might be utterly boring and pointless. Anyway, uh, uh, Hayden mask cows, mask owls says, John, you know, Pixels is the best video game movie. Fucking Pixels. I forgot about that. Oh, I forgot about that. I reviewed that movie. I remember seeing that movie. That movie was made. Didn't that just feel like such a low point? Uh, Derek Jacob says, are you following current WWE? Yes. I, I'm a, I, I'm a hardcore wrestling fan. I watch it every chance I get. I, I can't wait for elimination chamber this weekend. I kind of plan my whole day around things like that. At this point in my life, it's just pure escapism. And that's really what I'm craving at this point in my life. And I, and the majority of the YouTube, wa- the majority of the YouTube videos I watch nowadays, I, I watch, uh, I watch people review wrestling pay-per-views. I find that interesting. If I stop talking about movies and I come back to YouTube, I would probably talk about wrestling. I I think I would. I'd probably bring back 2016, the flick pick. Hey there, guys. (laughs) I just saw this new movie. Um, And then I just pop and simultaneously combust. Uh, Derek Jacob says, Joey Ruiz, Lord of the Rings says, how was Godzilla one? And did you like the beekeeper? I Godzilla one. You mean with, Oh, Godzilla minus one. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't see it yet. I will watch it when it comes out on 4k man. And then what was, I did not see the beekeeper. I did. I, I just feel like all the Jason Statham action movies for the last 10 years kind of blend together. Hi, I'm the beekeeper. Hi, I'm the pizza delivery driver. Hey, I'm the transporter. Hey, <laughs> uh, Ingrid Plaza thanks for the, the glorious glorious question here here it goes if you ever go to Portland, Oregon you have to check out Movie Madness they are one of the largest video rental stores with over 100,000 titles perfect for your late night cravings to browse through the aisles of the stores well thank you for that question I will check it out I actually my um, I have a younger sister or well, not younger she's older um, I do have a younger sister, but my, one of my sisters, my, my older sisters actually live in Eugene, Oregon, but I've never been there. Um, but that's, I'll definitely check it out. Doesn't, is it, is it Washington or Oregon? I think it's Oregon that had the last remaining blockbuster. Isn't that, uh, I think that's slightly accurate. If it's not, do not correct me. Thank you. But no, I think that'd be really cool to check out at some point. I know there's tons of YouTube videos going to, but it's, it sounds like the, the West Coast is a place to go. Okay. Uh, Claudia Rojan back again, who says, did you start watching Banshee at all? I did not, Claudio. I did not. Please forgive me, sir. Uh, J. BP91 says, Hey man, been watching for 12 years. If you ever go to Portland, Oregon, oh. you have to check out Movie Madness. Sorry, my robot voice is talking. Uh, hey, okay, let me repeat that. Let me give it the respect that it deserves, JB. Hey man, 
Been watching for 12 years, just became single again, lacking motivation to do anything, feeling lost, need some life advice. Love you, man. Well, thank you. I don't know if I'm the best guy to give you life advice. I really don't. But I will tell you this. Yeah, try something new, man. Put yourself out there. If you try something new, at least you don't feel like you're rotting away. That's kind of always been my my way of dealing with depression. I know it's hard to do it, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be significant. I'm not saying take take up skydiving or join a rowing team, okay? That's not what I'm saying to you. But just do something very minute that's different. It, it, go on a walk, man. Put yourself out there. Turn on some 80s rock ballads. And you know my favorite thing to do when I was truly feeling depressed, when I lived alone? It was listening to 80s music and cleaning my house. I loved it. I, I thought it was the most cathartic slash therapeutic thing I ever did. Yes, I just told you to go clean your house to feel better. I'm sorry, but it's the little things like that that help dig you out of a deep hole. And thank you for listening to Live Advice by the Flick Pick. It's now two o or sorry, it's now ten oh two PM for all you late night listeners. All right, let's go to the next question here. Uh, Max Nugenbauer says, I saw Madame Webb last week. It's atrocious. Worst comic book movie of the 2020s so far. Even worse than Morbius. I think Morbius was worse, to be honest with you, just because I'm at a point where I cannot look at Jared Leto's face. I can't do it. I'm not saying he's a bad looking guy. I'm just saying it's, it's, I can't, he doesn't feel real to me. You can just feel the pretentiousness coming off, oozing out of his pores through the screen and it gets on me and I'm like, ugh. I just, I can't buy Jerry Little as an actor anymore. I'm sorry. At one point, great guy. Beautiful eyes, but I just can't watch Jerry Little movies anymore. And by the way, speaking of movies, I do have this Columbia Classics uh, 4K HD Collection Volume 4 uh, that was sent to me that I've had in my lap for the last 15 minutes that maybe I could open and share with you guys. Now, I do have all the previous volumes, one through three, back there on the shelves, and some really great titles in there. One of my favorite probably being Taxi Driver. But as far as this new one goes, if you guys want me to open this up right now, I can. Just click the thumbs up button or type it away in the comments. And I will grab my battering and I will slowly but surely open this up momentarily. Elvin Tabash says... What are movies that you loved in your top movies of the year list over the years that you hate now or like, what the fuck was I thinking? Dude, there's probably a ton in there. There's definitely some movies in my top tens where it's not that I didn't like the movie. It's that I kind of had to fill up my top 10. And there were some years where maybe honestly I'd put five movies in there, but the other five would, I would technically say the best, remaining five of the year to fill up my top 10, but they were definitely movies. I would never want to go back and rewatch again. And, um, ah, I, I almost want to go back right now and rewatch some of my top 10 videos. There's definitely tons in there. There's definitely, I, you know what, if you could redo certain things in life, I think in 2015, my top 10 that year, my number one and number two, uh, it came down between Mad Max Fury Road and Star Wars. Um, and I put Star Wars in there from 2015, The Force Awakens. And I think I think Mad Max should have been the pick, you know? So little things like that. But I, I, there's definitely a few in there that I probably, yeah, uh, I would never mention. That's why doing top tens is kind of like slightly disingenuous to a certain degree. I feel like after number seven, I'm kind of just filling up the list. <laughs> uh, what's Dr. Sickle? Okay, I don't see it. I was looking for a question in here. I, I don't see it. All right, the next one comes from Claudia Rogue, John Hollywood just uses the same 25 actors repeatedly. Oh yeah, absolutely. It feels like every Hollywood actor now is locked into a 10 picture deal. And that studio definitely uses them up for every single movie that they put out for the next five years. Uh, Chris Pratt. Chris 
Craig Thompson says, would you like to go on the John Campia podcast? I mean, not really. I, I just, I, I have no urge to do that at all. I just really don't. I, I wouldn't mind running into John Campia in an elevator for five minutes and be like, Hey, I like your YouTube videos. I think they're, you know, really well produced and blah, blah, blah. But no, I don't think I would need to be on the John Campio show. I just really don't. <laughs> but I, and for our next main question, ideal wrestling says I am in a small studio apartment. <laughs> Do you remember when this used to be a wrestling or I'm sorry, a movie live show? It went to wrestling. Now we're on. This is, this is, uh, okay. I love the way this started out. Let's, let's make it get real intimate. And I will talk about this momentarily, but it's getting real intimate. Here we go. Here we go. I am in a small studio apartment apartment. I am watching on my desktop and I am the maintenance man for the apartment apartment complex. I avoid showing my face outside. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. That got dark real quick. That almost was going to turn into a Darren Aronofsky film. Okay. I love it, man. Thank you for that. That was, see, that's the intimate detailed comments I'm looking for f- from you guys. And I appreciate that. That's, isn't that great? I know where you are. I can picture it in my head. It's glorious, man. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Night King 01 says, I think you missed a Streamlab question before. I will try to find it. Night King 01. <laughs> I, I don't see it. I'm looking though. I'll, I'll try to find it. If not, I will. Can you repeat it in the normal chat and I'll get to it? Uh, Brett A says, what do you think of the movie Butterfly Butterfly Effect? Also, what were your thoughts on Cleveland? I grew up in Akron, Ohio. Live in Charleston, South Carolina, but miss Akron. You know what's funny? I was just thinking about Akron, Ohio the other day. Now, I did live there. I lived in Stowe, Ohio, which is basically connected to Akron. It's the same city, just a little more suburbanized. And I thought Akron was sort of an unsettling city that just looked like it was run down for the most part. And it felt really discombobulated as a city. I don't know. I I just didn't, I couldn't find my groove in that town. I don't know what it was, the logistics of it, the look of it, the tone, the atmosphere. I just, I didn't vibe with it at all. It was not a place I knew I wanted to live longer than two years. Um, those are my thoughts in Akron, Ohio. I'm sorry if I offended you. I, I thought the suburbs of Stowe were nice. Um, the best thing about Akron, Ohio, living there, honestly, was I had all the press screenings on the edge of Cleveland, which was only 35 minutes away. And I could go see every new movie right away. And it was 30 minutes away. That was the best thing about Akron, Ohio. Oh, and LeBron James is from there. You know, I did see the LeBron James museum house or his house. I drove past his old house. It was on a, like a real hilly area through these woods. I accidentally drove by it one day. Um, Chase C says, just watch true romance for the first time in 15 years. Such an underrated classic serious question is Christian Slater, your biological father, put a turbo dug in the microwave. Uh, no, I, I, I would say even 10 years ago, I had more of a little Christian Slater thing going on and I did get that a few times. Hey, I'll take the compliment. Uh, August Babington says, choose a name for a future child, child after a pro wrestler. You know, I've been thinking about what I would like to name my child one day, and I don't know if I want to name it after a wrestler, but I was thinking something like the name Lord Humongous. Just imagine that shit, or at least a middle name, Lord Humongous. I like it. What? But if I had to pick a name, I don't know. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin. (laughs) All right. The next one comes from 
Chris Salamu says, hey, dude, been a while. What's been, has it been a while? I swear you were just here a live show ago. Uh, Big Tony Rocket says, John, definitely on the edibles. It's just, it's just my late night medicine, guys. Don't, don't get weird. All right. I'm real. It's just the caffeine from the caffeine free Sprite Zero. All right. The next question comes from makes the live shows better. Let's be honest. Elliot Cecil, who says at the gym now, did you see the concert art of the Batman Beyond movie that came out today? No, I did not. I did not see that. Uh, Derek Haggett says, good day, John. Are you excited for the Borderlands movie? If we finally got a look today, I think it looks better than I expected. Did it? So Derek, did the trailer come out because someone just 27 minutes ago said that we were getting the trailer tomorrow, but did it come out now at 10 o'clock? I, so that's cool. I'll definitely check out the trailer after the live show. I am curious. Give me a good post-apocalyptic movie any day of the week. And thanks to all 305 of you watching. I guess 10 o'clock on a Wednesday, or I'm sorry, it's Tuesday, is the sweet spot for one of these. Uh, Stuckman getting flamed by the YouTube critics. John, have you been Stuckmanized? I was always able to avoid being Stuckmanized. But what are the long-term side effects really? (laughs) I don't know. Okay, the next one comes from Night King01, who says, John, I've been thinking about Shia LaBeouf lately. (laughs) Okay, this is getting good. All right, let me get to it. For no particular reason, I realize he has, I realize, has he ever given a truly awful performance? It's mostly movies he's in, which usually I promise you I can read, but the the screen's moving. He's usually the best part of. And don't bring up Crystal Skull because I know you will. (laughs) Uh, Night King 01, you know me too well, my good friend. Well, Shia LaBeouf can act his ass off. He really can. He can always get crazy and yell. I mean, I even liked him in Holes. But I will say his fidgety Sam Witwicky style by like the third Transformers movie or the fourth or whatever. I think you, the third one was the finale for him. But hey, guys, Optimus, you know, I, I, that I would say I think Transformers got a little redundant with him. But no, he can act. But he kind of always had the same shtick. Just kind of an anxiety driven kind of fidgety teenager who kind of stutters quite often. Which, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying. You know what's an underrated gym, in my opinion? Disturbia, starring Shia LaBeouf. I think that's a that's a fine little movie. Oh, Cosborn just agreed. Well, thank you. Okay, here we go. Here's the next one. If I can find it. Dr. Sick Evil says, and I believe he's been waiting a long time to ask this question. John, when the cameras are off at Chris's, were you stuckmanized? Define stuckmanized. Would you like to, would you like me to show you on the pop can where I was stuckmanized? Uh, no, I wasn't, man. I We were best buddies for a long time. You know, there's a lot of... Good times in there. I miss them. A lot of creative efforts. It always felt like a, f- a fun competition back and forth for like the first three or four years. Anyway, and how traumatized are you? I keep getting interrupted by ads during your stream and I hate it. Is there a lot of ads during this stream? I can tell you this about YouTube, everyone. Have you noticed there's 8,000% more ads? Have you know, like if you scroll on a YouTube video for 1.3 milliseconds, 
you get another unskippable ad. Then you scroll 2.1 seconds, you get another unskippable ad. And then not only does it play one ad, it'll play two ads back to back. And I can promise you this, for all the ads they're showing on YouTube, the the ad revenue is not uh, indicative of that many fucking ads. I will tell you that. It seems like less. But then again, would we put it past any corporation to take from us little guys? No. They have our best interests in mind. Okay, the next one comes from Derek Jacob, who says, Would you rather see Cody finish the story or The Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania 40? I would much rather see Cody finish the story. It needs to happen. It's time to happen. I want to see it happen. I would like to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns, but maybe they'll build it up to the next WrestleMania, or maybe it'll happen at SummerSlam. But I see, I, I, I think it's time for Cody Rhodes to capitalize on on his baby face card. Elliot Cecil says, also Blade Runner, twenty ninety nine begins filming next month. That's right, I did remember that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I love big sci fi films that are well crafted and well made. I like smart man thinking sci-fi films. But then again, I'm sort of in a weird guilty pleasure way looking forward to Twisters when that CGI abomination hits screens. I like the original Twister. Um, I like Glenn Powell. I think he plays the uh, cocky asshole very well. I can appreciate good characters like that. Talking to you, Hangman. Uh, But yeah, so I, I don't mind a good big B movie at times, but uh, nothing better than a smart man thinking sci-fi flick. So I, I'm hoping Blade Runner 2099 fulfills that void in my life right now. So uh, Joseph Knoll says, do you watch Theo Vaughn? I occasionally watch clips of him on TikTok when I'm taking a crap. August Babington says, if it was raining and Tom Hardy knocked on your door and there was poop on his lips, would you kiss him? I mean, come on. I'm sure the rain washed most of it away before he got up to my door. I don't know. You know what would make that situation if he was wearing a Bane mask? That's that's fine. Uh, Gabe K says, if you were about to die and only one option you had was to watch one last film with your friends before committing suicide to to eternal sleep, it's getting dark tonight. Uh, What film would you choose to watch and why? I would pick a ghost story. (laughs) One last movie to watch. Maybe something that takes me to my happy place. So one last satisfying, happy tear could trickle down my cheek before I meet my demise. But in reality, what I would really do, and this is where those survival instincts kick in, I would probably watch Roadhouse. Because what that would do, it would increase my testosterone level to 3,775%, and I would scissor kick my fucking way. I don't, whatever that is, I don't know. You know what it is? I would probably watch... I'd probably pick a really long movie so I have more time. I don't know. I'd watch uh, Game of Thrones. It's not a movie. Terrible answer. I'm sorry. Let's go to the next one. Uh, Jay Phillips says, nothing, but thank you, Jay Phillips. James Nichols says, John, do you ever watch the UFC? I like the UFC. I'll check it out every time it's on or someone's uh, illegally uh, streaming the pay-per-view. I'll definitely go there. But, yeah, I like watching it. You know, there's definitely fights more interesting and brutal than others. Uh, but I, I I enjoy the sport. Yeah. It's really the only real-life sport I, I think I enjoy. That's not predetermined. Or is it? Uh, Gabe K says... Stuckman getting roasted so badly online the last few days for his refusal to critique movies, he he has been hilarious. He should just stop doing reviews. Yeah, once again, I I hate to keep poking a, I was going to say a dead dead cat, but that sounds morbid. What's the saying? Poke a dead something? What are we poking here? Anyway, how how does that saying go Poke a dead horse? Anyway. Sorry. 
But he said many, many, he said three years ago that he was only going to review movies that he liked and wanted to talk about. I, I don't know if he just reaffirmed that in a weird way in this video, but are people just caught on? But yes, but I think what he said was you shouldn't critique a bad movie, right? It's not that I won't, it's that no one should, which is a bit flawed, I guess. I don't know. I, is that, I think. Is that what he said, or am I misspeaking? I did not watch the video to review it or analyze it or even give it a hilariosity review. Poke a sleeping bear. Holy shit, I got that wrong, didn't I? I said poke a dead cat. You can tell how I was brought up, and that explains a lot, does it not? Let's go to the next question. Claudia Rogajan coming back again, who says, was Shay actually bad in Crystal Skull? I think no. Was Shia bad in Crystal Skull? He was fine. He played the fidgety, greaser, uh, 1950s guy who acted like Shia LaBeouf. He was fine. Jacob Conley says, hobby or topic you'd do for YouTube if it wasn't movies. <sighs> I would think one hobby I would like to do is I, I think I like pro wrestling quite a bit. I'm fascinated by it. I would like to talk about that. Uh, another hobby I might do if it wasn't relating to movies, maybe I would have gotten more into the, uh, the fitness channel vloggy uh, style content back when I was addicted to going to the gym. That might've been another genre I would have tapped into, but also, you know, part of me has always thought, just casual topical videos about whatever interests me, whatever big topics happening that I want to chime in on give my useless two cents. That would be interesting to me. I think that would be fun because you can talk about whatever you want to talk about in every video. And I think that's a great freedom. And I think that's why I like doing live streams. To be honest with you, I like just talking about random things whenever they're presented to me. So maybe one of those. Uh, Martin Valuk says, thoughts on Carl Weathers passing, that one hurt. What's the matter, pushing too many pencils? Uh, yeah, man, you know, Carl Weathers, but you gotta, you gotta give it up to the man. First of all, have one of the best physiques in the business, okay? Iconic roles, performances, had a lifelong career. He kind of did everything he wanted to. And when I think of someone who passing away who's accomplished all those things, I think, all right, you know what? Good for you, man. You did it. You you got it all in. Every every box was checkmarked. So in that sense, you know, he he did it, man. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just kind of it's in a weird way. It kind of it makes you sad because some of your childhood classics kind of die with him in a weird way. Like every time I go back to watch Predator, I'm gonna be like, oh man, that dude's gone now, and it makes you feel old, and then you question your own mortality, and it's just gonna get too dark and introspective and then you have to go to the next question uh, Night King 01 says I saw the first look for the Borderlands movie as someone who has played the game I can confidently say I have never seen a movie so miscast in my entire life you're telling me Hollywood did it again ha <sighs> I don't know. What was the budget of the Borderlands movie? Was it significant? Did it have a huge budget? Or was it one of those slightly under-budgeted comic book movies where they hope the IP is enough to carry it, but it never is, and there was not enough money in here to pull this shit off? You tell me. What was it? Or I could just watch the trailer. Uh, Derek Hackett says, Been re-watching some DCEU recently. Who was worse? Jesse Eisenberg in Batman v Superman or Jared Leto in Suicide Squad? Holy shit. That is a great, great debate to be had. I would say I think I enjoyed Batman v Superman significantly more. But had Jesse Eisenberg been recast to someone I just could slightly take serious or want to watch on the screen, it would have helped elevate the movie ever so slightly. So for me, I would personally, I'd rather have Jesse Eisenberg recast, but that Jared Leto interpretation of the Joker, man, I don't know about that shit. <laughs> oh, 
I, you know what? I'd probably just keep Jared Leto because it was so bad, but it's fun to look at. But Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor was just insufferable. Can we agree? Can we agree on that? Okay. Uh, August Babington says, if it was raining and I knocked on your door and there was poop on my lips, would you kiss me? August Babington, whatever weird, sick fantasy you want to live, I'll placate to it. I will. Because that's who I am, and that's a price I'm willing to pay to give you what you want. So, yes, I would. Okay. Okay. I, all right. One of my viewers wanted me to make out with them with shit on their face. And the next question is from Claudia Rogojohn. Here it goes. Finally said something good about Crystal Skull. Well, you're con- you're welcome, man. It's the least I can do for you. You're always here. You're always watching. Claudio, I have a question for you, man. You do not miss a live stream and you participate so much and you keep me on my toes and you give me shit and I quite enjoy it from you, man. I really do. And Night King 01. I know I know you're here too. How do you not never miss a live show? How do you never miss one? I I got to know. You're dedicated, man. Uh Jonathan Diaz says, hey, man, what's your streaming schedule? It's been so long since I've tuned in and your show tonight made my 40 minute cardio workout fly by. That's what I do. That's what I do, man. I, I talk movies and I burn carbs. That's what I do. Um, well, thanks for that. I don't have an exact schedule for this live show. And at many times I've tried to come up with a schedule, maybe Mondays, maybe Tuesdays, maybe Wednesdays. And the weird thing is, it's very much like making YouTube videos for 13 years. I could never be ordered to sit down and make a YouTube video right now, today. I, I could never do it because I have to do this when I want to. I have to be passionate. There's shit I need to talk about. I need this gurgling up inside of my bowels until it almost spews over. And that's when I push record on this camera. So the, to tell you I'm going to have a a scheduled start date or end date or a schedule for these live shows. I wish I could turn that button on and off. I simply cannot do it. And I just do these when I have the urge to do them. So in that way, it's the most, it's the, the worst scheduled thing on YouTube. It's very impromptu, but I think that's, what's fun and exciting about it. Hey, maybe you'll catch one. Hey, maybe if I did these every Monday night at 10 o'clock, I'd get way more viewers. Probably. Yes, I know I would. But I think it's far more exciting that I just do this shit whenever I feel like it. And whoever's whoever happens to be looking at their YouTube sub box clicks on it. I think that's beautiful. It's almost precious in a sense. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. Sony Chavez says, this is exactly why I only watch you. Jeremy Jones, 3C Films, and Double Toasted because you guys are not afraid to call out a movie if it's bad. Yeah, you know, I, I, the thing is, you have to understand, you have to placate to people when you want to do certain things in a certain industry. And, you know, I get it. You know, if I wanted to, um, I don't know, get brownie points with someone, I probably wouldn't talk shit about everything they did and then meet them face to face and go, hey, can I have a gig? You know, so it's, it's, it, yeah, I, 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 I do agree with you. Uh, but those are great guys, man. I, I appreciate anyone on YouTube. If you're going to talk about movies, you got to say the good. You got to say the bad. It, you can pull punches if you want to, but I think being cynical and, and giving a real honest critic. How do I want to say this? Giving criticism to something, I think in a way is almost a compliment Because to say, oh, that was perfect, that was great, I liked everything, to me, is one of the worst things someone can say about a piece of art. Say what you liked and say what you didn't. But 
as long as you tell me how you feel, I feel like I did my job over here. So I think when it comes to being maybe a filmmaker, I mean, to crap on a movie that's obviously bad, I, I, I think you, you either have to be, to not do that, you have to be blind or you're lying. You know, like something like when Fantastic Four stick came out, right? We remember that movie. Everyone crapped on that movie. No one thought about how the guy who directed it felt because he crapped on it too. And because we call out movies like it is or people who are honest about their thoughts on movies and criticism of blah, blah, blah. Um, it's because of those criticisms, movies grow and they expand and Hollywood hears your real thoughts and they, they try to fix those things. Not always. I'm not saying this always happens. Sometimes it never does, but when enough people complain and the criticism is valid and constructive, even, um, that's how you get better results in the end. You will get nothing that's perfect without criticizing it first. Let's go to the next question. I have a battering in my hand. I'm going to throw it at someone. All right. Jo- Sorry. John Mason says, are you, are you looking forward to Cobra Kai season six? Kind of, but doesn't it feel like they've done everything they can thus far in Cobra Kai? I mean, Hey, we've had 14 karate tournaments, Dudes are beating up chicks. Chicks are beating up dudes. There's roundhouse kicks. There's uh, Terry Silver's over there being all weird with a creepy clan of kids that he just hangs out with and puts way too much time and investment into. Uh, It gets really odd. It really does get odd how much time these adults want to spend with doing karate and these kids in warehouses. Anyway, sorry, I wasn't even trying to make that weird. That just occurred to me. No, I think I'm good. I think it concluded... At a logical point, I think they've done everything they can in a Cobra Kai series. I quite enjoyed it. I've always lo- loved the character of Johnny Lawrence. Now, I think they are making a Karate Kid film, if I'm not mistaken, that might be sort of the finale of Cobra Kai. I could be misinterpreting what I've heard, but that's what I vaguely remember. Uh, Max Dugenbauer says, I sent a super chat about Stuckman a while ago. I think we've covered everything, haven't we? Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, he's, listen, he wants to be a director, man. Uh, and he's, he, he just wants to make it. And, uh, I don't know. We'll leave it there. I, what more can we add to this subject? But it's just so f- odd to me that it had to be Madame Webb that brought this all out. Uh, Shrieker Candela says tips for someone just starting in the gym. Love you, John. Just keep going, man. Suck down those protein shakes. Uh, take a caffeinated beverage before you go. Only if you don't have heart palpitation issues and uh, listen to some music and just go to the gym, man. Two, three weeks, whatever works best for you. Just, just get out there and go it and do it. I'm sorry. That was really vague advice. I, I will give you better advice. I do need to dive into this in just one second. Um, but really, if you're if you're a newbie at the gym, go up and down all the, the the rows of machines and just do them. Just get used and familiar with them and see what works best for you and then develop a routine once you get familiar with everything in that gym and what it does. And just have fun with it. But yes, Hans Zimmer music does help. The next one comes from Mason Arnold, who says Lee Wannell should direct the Escape from New York remake you mentioned earlier. I was, it's not a bad choice. I'm trying to, there's, I'm trying to think of, I cannot remember the director's name. It'll come to me. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential with an Escape from New York remake. I know a lot of people are cringing right now. What the fuck is he saying? Just hear me out. If it was treated with respect and done in the same John Carpenter vibe, not this modern day Hollywood overlit hair light shit with everything being a green screen behind it. I'm talking about something real gritty, gorilla style, shot on a minimal budget, maybe produced by A24. I'm just, just, you know, I know that'll never happen, but I think that would be a really interesting Escape from New York movie. Just raw and gritty.
Uh, Cloudy Rogue John says, I'm a vampire like you, John, and stay up to watch you. Well, thank you for that. I, I'm no longer a vampire. I think I'm, I'm, I'm turning or something. I don't know what happened. I lost my va- vampire capabilities. I, I no longer can st- getting to 12 o'clock at midnight is hard for me. It really is. Sometimes at seven o'clock I'll be in bed watching TV thinking, holy shit, I am tired. So yeah, enjoy it while you can, man. My damn web ruining lives. Yeah, I don't want to get I so I don't want to get into spoilers about Madame Webb. I I don't want to spoil it in case three of you want to see the movie. But just those last 5 minutes. <laughs> you have to question. You just have to question. What were they thinking? It was there's if they watched that during a test screening all the Hollywood execs got around and watched that and thought, "Okay, this is it." Or did they sit there and watch that thinking, oh my God, what have we done? We'll do anything to keep keep the IP rate rights to this film. And then maybe we'll just cancel it and, and make it a tax write-off. I don't know. I really don't know. Like if Warner Brothers is canceling the Batgirl movie or Batwoman movie, you have to wonder how bad that was in compared... In comparison to Madame Webb, which actually got a theatrical release. Well, anyway, okay, let's spoil that that piece of junk. Um, and if you like the movie, that's cool. I, you know, but it, it you should like better movies. All right. Who am I to tell you what you should like? Who who am I to tell you that? I'm sorry, but it is a bad movie. Let's be honest. So the final sequence in Madame Webb is she comes out of nowhere and a magneto wheelchair wearing Brett, the Hitman heart sunglasses from 1997. And then the three spider women are in there and they all kind of just awkwardly look at the camera and they're living together. And none of them for some reason had parents in the movie because they were all out of town at the exact same time. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just a really bizarre ending where I thought, are they trying to set this up like an X-Men movie from 1997 or something? Do you remember the made-for-TV X-Men movie? It might not have been called X-Men, but it was called something like that from the 90s. It was really shitty. It felt like a scene in that. That's the best way I can describe that ending. It was really unbecoming. Thinking about it makes me want to take this this battering and jab it into the side of my skull, but I will not do that. <sighs> okay. Uh, Joey Ruas, Lord of the Rings says, "Did you like the last Starfighter? Shouldn't there be a remake? Did you see the new Arnold State Farm commercial, Neighbor? Can you do Arnold Schwarzenegger voice? Do it, do it now. I'm not a perfect. I just wanted a Turbo Man doll." Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's my Arnold impression. Uh, yeah, so I, I will talk about this box set in a second. But uh, did you say you said Starman? Did you not in your question? Oh, Starfighter, the last Starfighter. I watched that a few times back in the day. I, I wasn't hardcore into it. No. Uh, Syrup Sailor says, ever had a herniated disc? I'm not sure if my lower back is herniated or I have sciatica or there's a compressed disc, I guess would technically be a herniated disc to some degree. I don't know. Um, I'm not a chiropractor, chiropractor, Uh, but I do have lower back issues, issues that flare up time to time. I don't know if I have a herniated disc though. Michael says, Hey John, why don't you go spend the night and hang out with Jeremy Johns or Austin Burke? Is there any other YouTuber you would be best buds with? I have hung out with Austin Burke. As a matter of fact, we've even slept together twice. (laughs) It's not how it sounds. Though I'm sure he wish it was. Uh, No, Uh, we actually hung out and did some Megacon panels together. And we had the same hotel room. Uh, Separate beds, separate beds. But uh, he is married. I have a fiance. Um, I sound like I'm guilty of something. I'm not. No, really nice guy. Super cool. Uh, I was surprised how much we kind of clicked and got along and had good chemistry. Um, 
But the one thing about both hotel rooms we had to stay in was, and I, it's just getting, I'm just digging the grave deeper, aren't I? Yeah, I like boys. I love them. Um, okay. But <laughs> let's get back to the topic here. Each bathroom in this hotel room, which by the way, neither bathroom in the hotel room went all the way to the top of the ceiling. It went like six feet up and stopped. And then you had a door that was like a barn door that had gaps 17 inches wide in them. So everything everyone did in the bathroom, you could hear. It just was so awkward. So it got to the point where if I was showering, if I wasn't having a conversation with him in the other part of the hotel room, it, that in itself was awkward. Awkward. You could hear each other washing. Never mind. Never mind. You could hear it flat. It just, it wasn't good. Uh, the next one comes out. What about Sean Chandler? I did meet Sean Chandler a couple of times at both mega cons, hung out with him. We ate at Applebee's. Uh, Cody Leach was there and three uh, C films. Chris Parker was there. Um, and I, me and Chris kind of became friends after that. Nice guy. He he gets my humor, um, which I appreciate. Yeah, but the thing about Sean Chandler, I'll tell you this much. We went to Applebee's and we got some food that was super, dis- it was just gross looking. It looked like it was microwaved. And Sean got this, this steak. And don't get me wrong, I love me a good steak. But this thing was... It was not cooked. He was going to get worms or something from eating this. It was the most raw steak I'd ever seen. It was slightly gray and it was just like oozing on the plate. And I was like, oh man, that's, <laughs> I couldn't believe how it was. It was really something to be behold. All right. Yeah, I was eating. Thanks for that. <laughs> sorry, man. I'm sorry. Uh, Dan Merle seems like a cool dude to have a drink with. Yeah, I always I met Dan a handful of times. Uh, I did. Uh, I went out to do uh, Screen Junkies movie fights like three times. I went out there to be a host on some of their uh, their series. So I met Dan many times and super nice guy. Dan is the same guy that he is in his videos. And also the thing I remember about Dan was I just some odd reason I remember I remember while I was in LA we went to see a screening of um Split and I sat beside Dan during during the movie. I was like, "Oh, this is interesting. I'm arm to arm with Dan Merle." <laughs> All right. John thoughts on Fear Factor? I enjoyed Fear Factor back in the day. All right, I'm going to open up this uh, Columbia Classics 4K Ultra HD Collection Volume 4. I do own the previous three volumes of this. Um, I mentioned earlier, probably my favorite release in that off the top of my head is Taxi Driver. But anytime you're going to take a great classic film or catalog title and put it on 4K, I can appreciate that, especially if it's a special release. So let's check this out. This is from Columbia Classics. And uh, the titles in this are not some of my favorite titles. And there's a couple I've never seen. It feels like they're, they've finally got past all those iconic titles, those household name brand titles like taxi driver. And now we're sort of digging a little deeper into a more niche demographic. Uh, but anyway, here it goes. His girl Friday, guess who's coming to dinner, which I actually have wanted to see that. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a pivotal classic film from the sixties about an interracial couple, which you just didn't do shit like that in the sixties or at least make movies about it. And then you have Kramer versus Kramer star man, sleepless in Seattle and punch drunk love. And really none of these are my favorite films. I would maybe like to revisit star man. Uh, maybe I'll had sleepless had I had sleepless in Seattle around Valentine's day. Maybe me and my uh, fiance could have watched that together. We like Tom Hanks movies in bed. There's nothing better. Uh, anyway, let's open this bad boy up. So all these sets always come in this orientation, which is sort of what I call a board game orientation. And I, I wish it came in an actual like cube or an actual box. 
Uh, it's just, it's hard to put these on the shelf. And the other thing is I think they're kind of ugly. I think the covers of these, though I think they're classy and they're fine, I just, I wish that the films themselves played a bigger part on the box art. I think it just looks really, it looks like an old encyclopedia, but hey, maybe that's the point. So you open this up. You got, uh, you have a booklet in here with artwork and all that cool stuff. And then you have all the movies in here on 4K. Uh, it's just paper discs that slip out. But a uh, pretty nice set, you know. I definitely recommend a few of the previous uh, volumes, definitely. If you've already collected those, well, now you're on the hook to buy this to complete your collection. So those are my thoughts. As far as the picture quality goes, I have not researched any of the picture quality of those 4K movies. But it does enhance my anticipation in watching them. Okay. Is there a debate about heaven and hell in the comment section over here? What did I miss? Uh, in Holmes 25 says Stuckman has definitely put himself between a rock and a hard place. And I get it. He honestly would have been better off announcing his retirement back then as a critic. Cause he's just a cheerleader now. Yeah. But also, you know, why not just make it clear? Hey, I'm just going to talk about movies. I want to talk about, and there's, and maybe pick an older movie that's really bad and kind of crap on it. Or I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I just think he wanted to talk about the movies he liked. He just, it's a, it's a positive mentality. It keeps you on track and it keeps you focused. You know, I, I always thought of Stuckman as sort of the personality type of, he likes to stay driven. He likes to stay focused. He might get tunnel vision. He sort of lives in his own universe, but within that universe, anything is possible. He can achieve any victory that he sets forth to. So that's, so I think that's why he wanted to talk about movies that he only liked. Um, and, and maybe he should have put on there. Hey guys, I'm not a critic. Don't watch me to be a critic. I'm just a dude talking about movies I like. And maybe he did say that. I don't know. I think I've talked about this 14 times tonight. Have I, I think I've covered it, right? Uh, Michael says, you guys are my white best friends. Y'all agree? Michael, I don't know your ethnicity, but I will be your best friend. Whatever color you want to call me, that's fine by me, man. Just. Okay, we were talking about that again. Okay. Nike 01 says, speaking about the movie Borderlands, you're... You're a merc on Pandora searching for a treasure where everything wants you dead. Yes, it's funny, but serious when it needs to be. This looks like a straight-up comedy. Also, Kate Blanchett is just too old for the film. The fact that they got Kate Blanchett to be in a Borderlands movie, I, I think that's in itself kind of impressive. She's a quality actress. Um, I don't know who she's playing because I never really followed the Borderlands games, but I always liked the aesthetics of them. Seems like Borderlands would have worked. It seems like it would have lent itself to be like a good Netflix series or something. Okay, I'll dive over here to the normal chat. And by the way, if you guys are uh, YouTube members, uh, please chime in right now. I'm 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 looking right at the normal chat. I'm gonna take a break from everything else and just whatever weird things you guys want to talk about. Let's dive into it real quick, rapid fired like. Are you watching the Halo show, John? No, I watched like seven minutes of it once. And I knew it just was not the right tone or consistency. It just was not what I wanted whatsoever. It looks like a Gillette Razor commercial or something. Like I could, I could, I could almost ma imagine Master Chief at the bathroom mirror with that internal dialogue. And he puts down the razor and he walks away and it plays the Halo theme and it says Gillette Razors. There's now 17 blades on it. That's what that series reminded me of. I know that's a weird comparison, but... It just dawned on me. All right. The next one comes from Jack Ryan movies was not a big fan of the Jack Ryan movies. Has Marvel ever been anti woke? I think we all know the answer to this. At one point when it was pure and unadulterated. 
Are you looking forward to the new Jurassic World movie? Yeah, I am. You know, as much as I'm not a fan of the last Jurassic World movie, which I think we can all agree was somewhat of a letdown. Let's just be honest with ourselves. Giant Locust, what were you thinking? Um, I'm looking forward to it. Listen, I love Jurassic Park. I like the theme. I like the vibe. Um, and if that's a dinosaur movie, the, that's the best big blockbuster dinosaur movie I can get. I'll take it. I'm just hoping the next one fixes those mistakes and they get a writer who can capitalize and, and share what Jurassic Park was and what made it so magical and special and not sterilize it like the Jurassic World did. Super Nintendo or N64 or Star Kid. The White Skull. Um, I was a Super Nintendo. Well, I had uh, Su- Super Nintendo. Then I went to N64. And I hated the controller on the N64 for like two years. Hated that shit. I was like, what do you do with the thing in the middle? I got this little knob. I, just, I was like, I'm not ambidextrous. I can't use this shit. Um, and then I eventually grew to love it. But I was always sort of envious, even as a kid during the SNES phase, I was always envious of like people that, that had a, a Sega. I was like, oh man, that looks so much cooler and edgier. But don't get me wrong. I still went home and enjoyed my Nintendo. I, I don't know. I guess it just, um, and then, and then you get older and you have the N64 and you have friends that have maybe a PlayStation and the graphics look a little bit better. The games are edgier. It just looks more violent. There's blood. And you go, oh man, I, I just, you, but I always sucked at Nintendo until Xbox came along and then I sold my soul. Uh, John, thoughts on T3 Rise of the Machines. Did you see it in theaters in 2003? Yes, I did. I was a huge Terminator fan. I have always been. And when uh, T3 was, they had a teaser uh, trailer for T3. And it showed all these skulls under the water. And it was awesome looking. And then the camera pans up. And you see this battle taking place. And it just... And then the music kicks in. Fuck yeah. And then you watch the movie and you go... What's Arnold doing wearing assless chaps? <laughs> like, like, so... Um, yeah, it was definitely not what I wanted it to be. And and I would almost say the same thing about Terminator Salvation. I thought that had a great teaser trailer. And then you watch the movie and it's just not where it needs to be. You're like, the premise was great. What's going on? Why am I looking at Sam Worthington? Please make it stop. Uh, be kind to yourself and others with a generous super chat, my good man. All right, let's read this question. Have a good rest of your week. Hope this helps pay off your TV. Man, that's... (laughs) You're too good to me. You're too good to me. I'm going to give you a digital hug in just one second. I know that sounds weird, but it's going to be genuine. But thank you for that, man. And I will put that towards my uh, Costco credit card uh, TV purchase. Thank you for that means a lot, man. Thank you. You guys are too good to me. And now here's my digital hug. Okay. I'll protect you. All right, let's keep going here. And the next question comes from favorite John Hughes movie. Probably if I had to pick one, I mean, there's like 10 of them, but there's not really a John Hughes movie I don't like, I guess would be the right way to answer that, but probably Home Alone or probably Home Alone or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But then The Breakfast Club speaks to me, so. Hey, you know what I got for Christmas? A pack of smokes. Here you go, Johnny. Smoke up. I love it, man. Uh, uh, John, thoughts on the upcoming Superman Legacy? I hope it's good. You and you and me both, man. I I have faith in it. I hope it's good. And James Gunn can direct the shit out of a comic book movie. But man, oh man, I think back to Suicide Squad and I think that was terrible. And then you cut forward to Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and I was like, okay, that was a pretty good send off. So when it comes to the upcoming Superman movie, I have faith in it. I'm really excited about the about the upcoming Batman movie. Now that's what gets me pulsating. I can't wait to see that. Please just just get it right. Just get it right this time. Don't be afraid. Just just make it right. Uh, 
Um, It is very kind. Yes, be kind. Uh, too kind, man. Someone said do something for you. I don't know what else to do. I, what do you, what do you want me to, I don't know what to do. Do a little dance for you. Put the strobe lights on. Get the baby oil out. I don't know what kind of party this is. That's inappropriate. Let's keep going. But I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to answer a handful more questions here. I'm going to wrap up this live show because it's getting late and I need to uh, finish this uh, Sprite Zero and probably brush my teeth. Uh, Claudia Rogojohn says, Blanchett's character is 27 in the games and she's 54. Yeah, I guess that's a stretch. A Train 98 says, hey, John, have you seen the talented Mr. Ripley? Dude, I have seen that, and I was talking about that just the other day with someone, and I I remember a lot of the the main points of it, how he's sort of a sociopath, and he murders someone, um, but I vaguely remember that movie. So it's one of those I would like to accidentally rewatch one day. Uh, twerk for him? That's gonna that's a private show, man. Come on. Did you watch Hey Arnold growing up? Yes, I did. I loved it. I still go back and reminisce about Hey Arnold's room. Give me that any day. That skylight, that potato clock, the couch that flipped out. Oh, fuck. Like, where did he get that room? How did he? (sighs) But I was always jealous of it. Uh, John, favorite Doug episode. Roger Klotz. Hey, funny. <laughs> uh, I love me some Doug, man. I, I can't recall my favorite episode, or maybe I can. It's the roots. Drumming on a trash can, banging on a street light. Does anyone else remember that song from Doug? Or am I the real, true, only 90s kid here tonight? No, I, 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 I'm hard to press to pick just one episode of it because they all kind of blend together and it's been so long since I've seen it. I can only remember moments. The White Skull says, you missed my super chat. Did I? Okay, let me, let me find it here. Come on, White Skull. Where is it, man? I, it's not popping up here. I'm looking, I'm looking, I don't see it. Can you just type it in the normal chat again and I'll find it? Just type it, type it right now. I'm going to read that shit. Uh, Michael says thoughts on 65 starring Adam driver. Listen, if you come to me and you tell me, Hey, we're going to make a sci-fi flick. That's it stars Adam driver. It's got a moderately respectable budget. It takes place in the future. And did I mention there's fucking dinosaurs in it? I don't know if I did. That sounds like the perfect culmination of something I would like to watch on a rainy night while I eat frozen pizza. And though it did technically have all of those things, it didn't do any of them well. (laughs) Uh, I just remember one point in the film where he gets stuck in this cave that looks like it's made out of paper mache and plastic. It just looked like a set. Um... And it just, they, they, if you don't have the right script, then don't waste the concept. But I like me some Adam Driver. Uh, Derek Hackett says, did you find it strange that Avatar 2 came out a year ago, made over $2 billion, and now not a single person on Earth talks about it or thinks about it? You know, actually, I do think about things like that often. And White Skull, I will get to your question. I do. I think... Th- the pop culture f- phenomenon surrounding even good movies is dwindling. Do you remember a time when a new Marvel movie would come out and it's all people would talk about for two months, six months beforehand, and then the movie would come out and we would still continue that conversation for months. And now we live in a time where we're bombarded with constant content all day long that things become old news very quickly and nothing really has a long shelf life, which is really disheartening and sad. I hate it. I liked when we used to savor the little moments in cinema and talk about it for a long time, 
But now we're just off to the next thing, no matter what it is. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to Avatar, I think that's a prime example. Made a lot of money. People went to go see it because, eh, well, let's go see something big at the theater. And it just did not resonate with anyone. And unlike the other IP movies that might be great, Avatar, I think the sequel was pretty forgettable. And I liked it. I really did. It was in my top 10 of that year. It's a great looking movie to look at. I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of scares me for the sequels coming out because maybe we'll give a shit about the next one. But I just feel like by the fifth installment, I'm I'm curious what those box office numbers are. Or maybe people just want to see blue shit doing people, people, not blue shit, blue people doing shit in space. I mean, I know I do. I'll pay $14 to go watch it. So I guess I'm guilty. And maybe James Cameron knows that too. Uh, the White Skull says, have you ever had a paranormal experience? There's times where maybe you see something or you imagine something and the little hairs on your arm stand up. There's been certain occasions, I think, where coincidence and happen chance were just too much. Um, I don't know if that's paranormal or just some kind of weird uh, phenomenon of just good luck every once in a while. But uh, I, I guess that's my closest encounter with a paranormal experience. I have never talked to a ghost. No, I have not. Would I like to? Sure. Robert Varquez says, love you, bro. Please see Godzilla minus one. It's so perfect, bro. Well, you gave me two bros in there and a bicep emoji. So I'm going to say, I promise you, I will see it. I will watch it as soon as I can on 4k. That's the way I will watch it at home. And I will experience it in the glory of my OLED TV. Uh, Gillian LaBelle says, just got back from seeing Madame Webb. People were laughing near the end. So bad. So yeah, I felt like maybe I was the asshole in the theater because at the end I, I snickered, I snickered and I could not help myself. I was really trying to hold it in and I couldn't. And it sounded like a sneeze meets to laugh. And then I, as soon as I did that, other people in the theater started laughing. So I don't know if maybe they were Maybe they thought it was great and I ruined the experience and I guess fuck me for doing that. But I like to think that they finally acknowledged what was happening on that screen. <laughs> I, I like to think I told them it's okay. We can laugh. We're in this together and no one has to remember it except I'm going to go on the internet tomorrow and tell everyone about it. Yeah. You know what it was? It was, it wasn't, it only got really bad towards like the third act. The first two acts were just a weird, bizarre movie that felt like it should have come out in 2003. And you know, it's sorry to get off. Well, it's sort of staying on topic, but going a different direction here. What is it with Sony when they make comic book films that they like to, create comic book films in the style of comic book films from 2002 to 2004. They all look like Catwoman or Elektra or Daredevil. The only thing missing from like their modern day comic book movies are like Nickelback sound scores. Um, they're like stuck in the early 2000s. Like they sort of have like that underworld look to them. Like that same weird music video look at times. Even the color grading feels off and they can't quite get the tone right. It's like they're, they're truly tone deaf because they film it like this twilight movie, but it's supposed to be a comedy at times and you're supposed to take it serious, but it feels like the, the cinematic quality of a Hallmark movie made around Christmas time. So it's a, yeah, it's just like, I don't know what's happening over there, how they can't just get the tone right. Is someone talking about renovating their kitchen in my in my stream over there? Am I boring you? I'll go to the next question. Damn it. Here we go. Um, <laughs> John, have you watched Rebel Moon? Yeah, I watched like half of it and I, I could not take it anymore. I really couldn't. Uh, John, honey, is the cringy movie ever next to the... What? I don't get the question. Nickelback is good. Hey, I, hey I'm not going to shit on Nickelback, okay? They got some catchy tunes. Just saying. But I won't tell people about it. 
Okay, Gilliam LaBelle says, third act was garbage, felt like it was edited by toddlers. Yeah, it felt a little bit weird and abrupt, and you question why things were happening, and, and then things just get more abrupt, and it feels like every cliche ending of a comic book movie <laughs> that you've ever seen. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, I, hey, I'm going to wrap up the live show there. Because the edibles are kicking in. But what I do want to say is, uh, thanks to all the questions, guys. Thanks for hanging out for a couple hours, talking about movies, talking about life, uh, gossiping about the YouTube drama, all the fun shit people should do. Um, but nevertheless, thanks for the questions. Thanks for watching. They do mean a lot. Uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, big thanks to be kind to yourself and others. Very generous uh, question tonight. So thank you, guys. Stay safe. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.